survey, and they are planning to have that easement come off of that eagle. where 
you have your handicapped parking, um, most of your parking areas up in that area. But it's at the boys' pleasure. You know. And then the line of trees that are parallel with the interstate, of course, that's on DOT's right of way. Um, <coughs> Similar to Nancy's about why couldn't the trees be around the out, way around the outside? There was there was no um, good reason to think about it. Um, but as you can see, the northern end of the property, there there's some room there um, to plant. Um, when they the expense, I think is is another one of their concerns. The expense, the amount uh, of money it would take to plant. But here again, the board can, you know, that's just a recommendation from the TRC. Um, one of the, the concerns we had was that the property is located almost a mile off of old, old Fiverr Road, so you really couldn't see it. Um, and one of the purposes and the intent of the landscape um, part of the beautification, well, you can't see it.
which we never were told about to begin with, so it was kind of a, you know, a shocker for us, but we're just so far into it right now that that's just not feasible. That would just put our whole project dead in the water, and we just have a big hole out there with water in it if, if we had to spend that much money on trees. And the, the cable company, the company that provides or that's, that sold us the actual mechanism that pulls the wakeboarders, is very concerned about just any trees drawing kind of any kind of animals or anything towards the lake. We want to create no real like, space, like shelters around the lake. And with those live oak trees, I mean, that's, that's plenty right there. It's like, you know, they're not going to be able to get too close to the lake because our shop will be right up in front of them. We're just trying to keep that sort of at bay, I guess. The, the, that was the cable company's concern was, was animals and stuff like that. You know, making, making a home near the lake and then, I mean, it's a perfect ecosystem for an animal like that. So we just we prefer to keep it as open as possible. And then obviously the safety for our driver in life and being able to see the whole, you have to be able to see pretty much everywhere from the bottom left corner of that circle. Like you have to be able to see the other ponds and that whole circle area as well as the, the top of where anybody's going to be walking on the property. But we, we are definitely willing to put up trees. We've already purchased, like I said, we have like 10 great myrtles so far, so we still plan on putting trees up. We just, and we're grassing them as well. We've already been out there seeing this. Um, on that map right there, there are two areas. There's a, there's a dashed line that goes across the back end of the site. Mm -hmm. um, is all of that wooded area included in your property? Or is no, that that's, that is not. This, this corner, the triangle bar right from that, where it juts up, that is included. That top section is not. Okay. But there are other trees in there. Yeah, that top section has a bunch of trees in there. Position this request. Any adjacent landowners, anyone here to speak against this request? Ms. Braswell, is there any contact to your office? No, sir. Board, any other questions or discussion before I ask for a motion? Having been out there and seen everything that we've talked about and knowing that y'all got plans for future development. 
of other items on your agenda. I don't think it's too much to um, ask for five canopy trees, and I don't think that Crate Girls come under a canopy tree. And you've got enough of your property line on the left-hand side in order to do that, so I'm gonna make a motion that we approve with the exception of you're having to add five canopy trees. Approved as requested of having to add five canopy trees. Uh, you also want the condition of the uh, existing trees to be left on the right? I mean, I don't think they're all for that, but go ahead. Canopy trees are when? When? By when? By when? Before they open? If a variance like this is passed, it will, will it stay with the property or will, is it conditional based upon the use of the property? It stays with the property. Okay. So if, if this piece of property that's used for commercial is changed later on to something else, this variance would stay with it or do you want the variance to, to disappear when the business goes away? Right? If, if, if it were to change. So I have a motion to approve as I presented, leaving the trees undisturbed up front and with the condition of having five canopy trees that are not great for um, <laughs> They don't come under canopy trees. <laughs> um, so we have a motion to have a second. So you got prior to the best in the business. Prior to the certificate of occupancy, you are okay. So, I have a motion to second. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Dr. Allen, any opposed? Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. You may have some opposed. Thank you, board. So, y'all can get the chrono on there. Kind of see where we where we want to that. So, in addition to five three, you're good. All right, so that concludes our Rounds County cases. Um, we have two ballots of city cases. Ms. <coughs> Tyler will be presenting to us in a moment. The first one is uh, application 2014-05, Melanie Ramsey, 500 East Alton Avenue. The first case in front of you is from Melanie Ramsey. She is proposing to locate a daycare facility on the corner of Alden and Marion, specifically at 500 East Alden. She's going to have 18 children in her daycare. The property is a office professional. There is an existing facility with parking on the driveway on the lot. There you can see the facility and the parking. This new facility with the adjacent property next door. There is a conditional use concurrently going through City Council at the same time to permit this vacator. It's going to be the final period is going to be this Thursday. The reason this is in front of you for a variance is because any daycare with more than 12 children has to be on a collector or an arterial in order to accommodate a little bit more traffic circulation with pickups, drop offs, things of that. Neither Alden nor Marion are arterials or collectors are going to flow. So that's why she's asking for the variance. Now, there is one unique facet to this request. She's proposing to transport the children from other locations, whether it be home, whether it be school, whether it be another facility, to this daycare. So she will provide the transportation to and from this daycare, unlike most facilities that generally tend to operate with parents giving the pick up and drop off. We do review the request. We do realize that there are collectors and arterials nearby. And with the caveat of her providing transportation to hopefully lessen the load for the local roads nearby, we do find it consistent with the variance review criteria and recommend approval subject to one condition that she provide the transportation. Any questions? I see a picture of where it's going to be. All in on the corner. 
the northeast corner of all the way here. Try and ask the coach who's sitting there. Okay. Okay, yeah. It is east more the street that is the arterial because it has the traffic light at the actual spot? Collect. So, uh, who's here to speak in support of this? Is Jeff here? So 
less than 12 or less, they don't need any variance. And if you condition the variance approval, then they have to ban. Okay, well, say, say we give them the variance and we say, pick up the kids in the van. Do they have to pick up all 18 kids in the van or all 10? Let's well, say they only have 10 kids. We've given them the variance, but they only have 10 kids. Do they have to use the van? Well, Gretchen just makes a good point. If we're conditioning the variance on 18 children, then at what point can they decide on their own to deviate from the variance and not use a van when they have six kids? Right. See, if we, if we condition <laughs> the, their they're business doing. upon the fact that she must have that van, we're not stipulating that, okay, well, if you have less than 18, you know, we don't have to worry about it because there's no point in us needing them. And that's, that's a good point, Richard. And it's an interesting question. We did not specify it. Um, you could clarify the wording of that and say if there's to be more than 12, then a van must be required as part of the facility. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Then that gives them time to, you know, to build up their clientele. It gives you a little more time to actually make that purchase. My understanding was that y'all are offering transportation Absolutely. as a benefit Absolutely. to your daycare. That's our selling point. Because you've got a lot of parents that cannot transport those children, and so they're going to be transporting whether they've got five or eight. Exactly. Okay, but in the interest of making certain we word it right, we want to put in there. Absolutely. We can have 12, but in yeah. the event of having more than we would have to do the transportation. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone here who wants to speak in opposition to this request? Seeing none, uh, Tracy. Has anyone called from the neighborhood and complained? Okay. Questions or comments from the board? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the variance um, that they um, be able to have the daycare here and have a van um, to transmit any children between 12 and 18. Under that, they don't have to. Okay. Any questions about the motion? Can I have a motion to have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Good luck, ladies. Thank you. Good luck with the uh, conditional use permit. Thank you. <laughs> Final case is APP 2014-06, Walmart Real Estate Business Trust at 1508 North Ashland Street. Property um, with Ashley Street frontage and 
whole parcel together. They are proposing building is a little over 41,000 square feet. Um, to put that in comparison for you, it's similar to the new Publix on the end of Thunder Road, which is about 45,000 square feet, so this is a little bit smaller. Um, it is about 12,000 square feet, so it's smaller than the Publix on Quarantine. Just the grocery store portion. So it's just a regular full service grocery store, not a 200,000 square foot super Walmart. Even though on the side plan it looks like a large building, when you see the word Walmart, you think huge store. This is not a huge store. Um, parking for grocery stores is a little bit different than basic retail. They meet the parking standards in terms of numbers. Um, this is, of course, not highly commercial, but it's also an urban commercial core or overlay district subject of several of these variances. Um, that is a district that stretches from near downtown all the way northward um, through High Point along North Ashley Street. In terms of building setback provisions, which is one of the major facets of the overlay district, um, there's a dividing line at Park Avenue. In the building south of Park Avenue, it required to be a little bit closer to the road than the buildings in the part of Ashley north of Park Avenue, north of Castle Park. Um, on the site plan, most things are labeled here see in red where you're showing some proposed setback distances for the building. Um, what is not labeled is to the rear of the development on Iowa Drive. Um, that is actually to the landscape buffer and stormwater management area. Uh, it's over 50 feet wide, so it's a pretty substantial area. Um, currently that area is wooded, and so there's already a lot of vegetation there. Um, and of course the standard layout of the parking a pharmacy um, drive through window along the north side of the building. Um, some stacking spaces there. And then you see the truck loading dock in the rear and then the truck exit driveway along the north end of the property. Another important feature is if you look on the uh, upper part of the site panel on the north end, you see a dashed line. Um, that is a large, very large drainage pipe um, that's owned by the Georgia DOT that facilitates drainage off of Ashley. Um, and it is by DOT's mind, it's simply just not movable. Um, Ashley has a very old drain system with pipes that are a little undersized. And we've all experienced during heavy downpours what Ashley Street can do. This pipe was put in decades ago to help alleviate that, and it would be difficult to try and relocate. And henceforth, it also becomes an obstacle on the side of the on this property. Um, you see elevation drawings. These are artist renderings of what we propose to do. Uh, dress in the facade a little bit, and of course, with the landscape. All right, back to the front page of the variances. I'm trying to summarize these. Into a little chart, and let's just walk through those. All right, the first one has to do with the sound back distance. Um, the requirement is that at least half of your building facade uh, be within 65 feet of the right of of Ashley and actually any other public street as well. One of the hardships with this property is it has three street frontages, which technically means that buildings have to be within that distance of all three streets. Um, typically, that is not the situation. Most parcels will have only one street frontage. Occasionally, you might run into a corner lot. This one's rather unusual because you have three street frontages. Nearly impossible to comply with that for all three. So at times we have looked at things like this before in other parts of the community. We simply pick the street. Ashley Street normally would be the more important. So here, they're you know, going to be fairly close to Iola, which is not a good thing, because that's the residential street, hence the buffering. Um, but because of the size of the building, the parking, the, and the orientation of the building needs to be in, they're proposed to be set back from Ashley a pretty good distance. Um, Number two has to do with overlay district architectural standards. The facade materials, there's a limit of 50% of your facade to be in split phase block or CMUs. Um, they're proposing a variety of percentages that you see there. The rear wall, which is the part that's not seen, would be 100%. Uh, the sides would be to be north, uh, 62, or the south, a little higher percentage. The pharmacy drive through a little less. And then the front facade, which is probably more important anyway. Um, it's proposed at 62%, so not too much above 50. Uh, one of the things to propose, which you can see in your drawings, is even though the materials are a lot of the same, um, they're proposed to vary colors and the design features to give the impression of something that's a little bit different. 
Um, the third variance, also architectural standards. This has to do with the facade design shape um, rather than a blank flat wall for large buildings. In this case, the trigger is 100 feet wide or wider. This building is 240 feet wide, so they've got to offset the plane. Okay. Um, the requirement is you offset four feet deep and 20 feet long as minimums. You can do that for every 50 feet above the 100. Um, they're required by their building to do it three times. So rather than three separate offsets, they're proposing one larger offset. Um, that would be 87 feet by 12 feet, which is sort of the entry porch into the grocery store. The fourth variance has to do with drive-through facilities. Um, there's a requirement of a minimum of six stacking spaces for the drive-through window. Uh, they're proposing three. There's actually room for four, but they're not showing it. There's three on the side plan. Um, this is very similar to a variant that we saw a few months ago for the medicine shop. This is for a pharmacy. This provision of the code was written for fast food restaurants in mind, having a stacking space. Um, it's believed by my staff that you know, pharmacies generally do not generate too much stacking traffic. Um, so they're requesting relief there. And the last variance has to do with the size of parking spaces. Valdez's current minimum standard is 8.5 feet wide by 19 feet deep. They're proposing to shave off one foot of the depth, going 19 to 18 feet. Um, but at the same time, in their design, they're wanting a wider parking space um, to increase rate and half to nine. Um, the irony is that is actually in the process of preparing amendments to the parking standards to reduce the parking depth from 19 to 18. So this is sort of premature, but good timing, I suppose. Um, those are the variances that are outlined, you see staff's commentary, which is on the next couple of pages. Um, the general concern is overlay district. Um, this is the first major redevelopment 